Those who give their lives to Christ-like ministry know the meaning of true happiness. Their interest and their prayers reach far beyond self. They themselves are growing as they try to help others. They become familiar with the largest plans, the most stirring enterprises. And how can they but grow when they place themselves in the divine channel of light and blessing? Such ones receive wisdom from heaven. They become more and more identified with Christ and all His plans. There is no opportunity for spiritual stagnation. The church that engages successfully in this work is a happy church. That man or that woman whose soul is drawn out in compassion and love for the erring and who labors to bring them to the fold of the great shepherd is engaged in a blessed work. And oh, what a soul-enrapturing thought that when one sinner is thus reclaimed, there is more joy in heaven than over ninety and nine just persons. Nothing is drudgery to the one who submits to the will of God. Doing it under the Lord is a thought that throws a charm over whatever work God gives him to do. The Christian laborer knows no drudgery in his heaven-appointed work. He enters into the joy of his Lord in seeing souls emancipated from the slavery of sin. And this joy repays him for every self-denial. To become a toiler to continue patiently in well-doing which calls for self-denying labor is a glorious work which heaven smiles upon. Christ delights to take apparently hopeless material, those whom Satan has debased and through whom he has worked, and make them the subjects of his grace. He makes his children his agents in the accomplishment of this work, and in its success, even in this life, they find a precious reward. Blessing. Every effort made for Christ's sake will react in blessing upon ourselves. Every duty performed, every sacrifice made in the name of Jesus brings an exceeding great reward. In the very act of duty, God speaks and gives His blessing. We should live in this world to win souls to the Savior. If we injure others, we injure ourselves also. If we bless others, we also bless ourselves. For the influence of every good deed is reflected upon our own hearts. Every ray of light shed upon others will be reflected upon our own hearts. Every kind and sympathizing word spoken to the sorrowful, every act to relieve the oppressed, and every gift to supply the necessities of our fellow beings, given or done with an eye to God's glory, will result in blessings to the giver. Those who are thus working are obeying a law of heaven and will receive the approval of God. While the great final reward is given at Christ's coming, true-hearted service for God brings a reward even in this life. Obstacles, opposition, and bitter, heartbreaking discouragements the worker will have to meet. He may not see the fruit of his toil, but in the face of all this he finds in his labor a blessed recompense. All who surrender themselves to God in unselfish service for humanity are in cooperation with the Lord of glory. This thought sweetens all toil, it embraces the will, it nerves the spirit for whatever may befall.